to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she accepted Islam. And subhanallah, you look at our youth today and how they're struggling simply to make salah, to pray their prayers in school, that they need an MSA to have a little corner to pray in. And those that don't have the little corner to pray in, don't think you're exempted from your prayers. Stand strong. Pray your prayer. People will see you. I give you an example of a brother many years ago who subhanallah stood firm upon his prayers. He used to be a non-Muslim in the sense that he was not an active Muslim. He considered himself as a student in the University of Carleton in Ottawa, someone who was jahil, someone who didn't used to practice Islam. Someone who, Islam, what's that? But one day he decided after going through changes in his life to start praying and establish his prayers one step at a time, not become Imam al-Bukhari overnight, start to pray and establish those prayers. And this is over two decades ago, in Ottawa, at the university. He started to leave his, his friends, those that were taking him away from the deen, those that would take you aside to go and smoke, those that would take you outside to go and drink, those that would take you inside of, bed, uh, inside of a bedroom to do something that is haram. He decided to leave those friends and establish his prayer to the extent that his friends became upset. Like he never, we never see him anymore. He doesn't chill with us anymore. Where is he? What is he doing? What happened to him? And subhanAllah, this person was inside of that room in the MSA office or the MSA room that was allocated for salah. And he was praying his prayers with such concentration and devotion. His friends would see him and think, we need to distract him from salah. That one day, one of the girls that he used to hang out with put on a bikini and started to strut her stuff in front of him while he was praying his salah. Now this is a reality of the society that we live in. And those that want to criticize and say, Astaghfirullah, how can you say this? Well, I'm not standing on the mimbar in the masjid, so you can't say we're in the house of Allah, we shouldn't be saying this. No, this is part of our deen. This is part of the struggles that you and I go through. This is what myself and all of the other youth that grew up and were born and raised, or maybe not born, but came to this country and went through the system. These are the challenges that we go through. And so this person is praying his salah, and she comes in front of him dancing as though he's in the middle of a strip club but he doesn't even blink. He doesn't even look at her. He's so concentrated in his salah. She gets annoyed, she gets upset. She starts to speak to him, what's wrong with you? He's praying, he's praying. She goes to the back, she waits. She covers herself up. She's like waiting for him to finish. He finishes his salah. He turns around, he sees her there. She's upset. She's like, what's wrong with you? Can't you see this? Don't you like this? And he says, my Lord is more important to me. I was praying to Allah. I have to pray to Allah five times a day. When you're obedient to Allah, you get whatever you want. You get that, you get anything. She was so impressed with his devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she accepted Islam. She accepts Islam. Imagine that as youth who stand your ground you stand firm upon what you believe.